when Hugo Chavez anointed Nicolas Maduro to succeed him as Venezuela's president, few realized that he would become Latin America's Robert Mugabe. After all, Maduro had a reputation as a conciliator. He was physically imposing, a big, burly man, but not charismatic and not known for ambition. The former bus driver had limited formal education and gave the impression of rising through the revolution's ranks, head of the National Assembly, foreign minister, deputy president, at Chavez's behest. Though raised a Roman Catholic, he was a follower of the late Indian spiritual guru Sai Baba and told The Guardian in 2014 he was a bit of a hippie with a penchant for John Lennon and Led Zeppelin. Our side is peace, love and tolerance, he said. Three years on, that sounds Orwellian. Venezuela is a basket case and Maduro, 54, is on his way to dictatorship. The government has banned protests and mobilized 370,000 troops in advance of today's vote that opposition leaders say will mark an end to democracy. It comes after four months of street protests and violent repression that have left more than 100 dead, thousands in jail and the country in chaos. Last week, the airlines Delta and Avianca suspended flights in and out of Venezuela, citing luggage theft and irregular fuel quality, among other reasons. The U.S. State Department ordered relatives of embassy employees to leave after Washington imposed new sanctions on Venezuelan officials. Colombia is bracing for an accelerated influx of Venezuelans fleeing hunger and desperation. The country is reeling from power. Cuts, hyperinflation, rampant crime and shortages of food, medicine and other basic goods. With foreign reserves evaporating, Venezuela may default on billions of dollars of debt payments.